Hey friends, um, welcome to June, yay! I apologize I didn't get May's readings done. Some of you were kind of like sending emails or leaving comments on different videos saying, what the fudge, where is May? Um, and if you follow on the Facebook page, that's a better place to keep updated with what's going on. I'm going to make a video about, um, you know, if, for those of you who have followed me for a long time, you know that I used to be super, super consistent and like ahead of the game. Um, but the last like year and a half to two years has been complete upheaval and like just crazy shit in my life. So I'm going to make a video about that later because there's like a lot of spiritual like lessons and things in that that a lot of people will benefit from, including um, like, you know, how to predict and navigate your way through different things that come up if you were to read your own tarot cards and like, anyway whatever. The thing I wanted to say before we started reading is that moving forward, like after June, yeah, I would say like probably about August of this year, everything, all the ducks should be in a row and things will get back on track so you can look forward to that. Uh, but in advance of that, I wanted to let you know, for those of you who are intending to purchase um, video readings, throughout like the first two weeks of June, there might be a delay in those. I um, am having a nose surgery, my nose is broken and it's causing sinus infections a lot. So I'll have like this big thing on my face. And so um, like a little, uh, what do they call that, a splint? And then maybe some black eyes after that. So I don't know how up for video reading I'm going to be uh, straight out the gate. But I will be keeping on top of email readings and phone readings. So there's that. Um, now, this month, what the reading looks like for you guys is what you can expect in work with your money. Because sometimes those are related, sometimes they're not. In your love life, whether you're single, coupled, or in an on-again, off-again relationship, like an undefined relationship. Maybe it's new and it's not Facebook official. Maybe, um, you know, you're polyamorous. Maybe you're the other woman in a uh, relationship or, I guess, the other man, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a sugar daddy situation or a, su a sugar baby situation. What do they call it when the guy, leave it in the comments if you know, when the guy, is it a kept man? If it's the dude that has a sugar mama? Anyway, yeah, if you know, let me know because I'm curious. And then we're also going to be looking at, you know, just kind of socially, like what do your relationships look like or what do you need to be aware of for this month, um, whether that is friends or family kind of situations. We're going to talk about your lucky day, um, which chakras you need to work on, what is your crystal of the month, uh, so many things in these readings this month. So um, let's just get started with it. Hey Leos, it's June. Okay, so what should you be expecting in regards to work? They're like, you might not feel super confident about that. Why is that? Uh, they're saying, well, you're paying attention to like the positive sides of things. Like you're seeing things through an optimistic lens, but there's just some things that might not be going right in regards to your work life. And they're like, but you have a full awareness and you kind of expected it. So um, me as a Leo, I have a broken nose and it causes a lot of sinus infections. So I'm just going to get it fixed. Okay. Because I realized with the help of my best Libra friend um, that I'm going to continue to have like migraines, which is going to not let me work the way that I want to, <laughs> you know, because I work with screens. I'm on my computer all the time. Um, you know, it's just better for me to like quickly get that done, get it fixed, get the sinus stuff all handled, and then um, I'll be able to work better, right? So it's like you kind of expect that. Like I know there's going to be like a week of time when I have a splint on my face and I won't be able to probably do video readings, for example, okay? Stuff like that. It's like these things are not um, unexpected, I suppose. And they're saying, but you're taking control of it the best way possible. The only thing is like you don't see how this is going to play out well. You're more concerned. Um, you're trying to focus on the positive side of things, right? But you're a little bit concerned about what, you know, the negative effects are. And like, even if 
you stay positive and like these little things with your work life that are maybe can messing things up in the shorter term, right? Like you're aware of the issues. It's kind of like, how bad do I want to solve those? Because honestly, there's still going to be other issues <laughs> concerning my work life. Um, you know, it's not a perfect scenario, no matter how you slice it. And so what they're saying is allowing other people to help you is going to be key. They're saying like this, allowing other people to come in and help you with things, you know, maybe hiring somebody for something or just like allowing friends to, um, for example, my sister always says, if you want me to watch your kids on Mondays, I can do that. And then I'm always like, no, 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 that's no problem. Like, don't worry about it. Like you live a little too far away. I don't want you to give up all your free time. And I'm concerned about burdening her, but you know, she wouldn't offer if she didn't want to do it. I need to remember that. And this is how I heal. And I find more balance making this, um, contract with yourself saying, you know what, in hard times, um, I really do need to rely on other people and I need to allow them to help me because I go out of my way to help other people when they have a crisis. And so they're saying like, you know, basically you, this has to happen. Like you have no other choice, you know, in your work life, if you want things to get better, um, except for to allow those people in, because look, you built this tower on a foundation that wasn't strong. Okay. So pieces fall off things start breaking and then you're just like putting a band-aid again and again and again you're patching it up little by little when really you should just knock the whole the whole bitch down and build a new one a new one that has a stronger base you know like it takes a village <laughs> that kind of a thing like a stronger support system allowing other people to help you because people do want to help you you just start framing it that way okay so that's what work looks like for June um, that's the key they say it's going to be challenging as a Leo especially so full of pride and like I'm strong and I can do it all and I'm determined um, but they're like you know view this as in your best interest and please ask others for help in regards to your work life. They say it doesn't, like asking for spiritual help isn't gonna cut it because the spiritual guidance and advice here, yes, you should always ask your angels and your guides to support you and to provide ease for you and things like that. But they're saying that's not enough. You you need help of other humans in regards to your work life, whether that's um, you know somebody that helps you uh, have a positive attitude about going to work, waking up on time, um, you know, taking some of your workload, maybe you're overworked there, but everybody's got, and I'm, you know, I mean, I'm generalizing, but yeah, I, I think that's okay in this scenario. Every single Leo, everybody with Leo in their chart has some part of their work life that's out of balance. It's fucked up and you need somebody to help you. Okay. So in regards to your money, they're saying, um, this is interesting. Like, you're not going to be giving it so much this month as you typically do, which might concern you that, you know, you're screwing up your money flow because the more you give, the more you get in a lot of scenarios, like on a spiritual level. However, they're saying that you are headed in a really positive direction. So if you're afraid that you spent money on something and it's not going to pay off, you're wrong. It will pay off. It'll help you to feel a lot more calm and ease. So going back to where we started in regards to balance and work, just like in a home life scenario, for example, you might say it's a waste of money to pay somebody to clean my house um it might feel like that yeah yeah it's a big expense but if you were to give the money to do that you'd feel a lot more relaxed in your home because a cluttered space is a cluttered mind and you wouldn't be doing negative self-talk about you know how you don't have the time to keep things as neat and tidy as you want and blah 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 and you know you'd have more time with your partner more time with your children things like that so you want to look at things um i know we're talking about money here not, you know, work, but you want to think about that as like an investment um, in certain ways. And so they're saying, you know, this month is going to be a lighter sm spending month for you than those previous, which is good. But, um, you know, at the same time, we do want to be considering how paying people or giving money to make our lives easier is going to pay us off in dividends even if it doesn't financially, it will in your mindset, which, you know, in a non-direct way will help you financially to attract more abundance. Okay. In regards to your love life, if you're single, they're saying like you're a little bit afraid that um, even though you put the past behind you, that coming up 
new patterns, or I'm sorry, new people, same old patterns. Uh, what they're saying is though, you know, whatever just makes you happy, be honest with yourself. Like, does hanging out with this person that I just met make me feel really joyous and happy? Or is it that I'm trying to create a bond and a connection with somebody? If you're not feeling like this is like a valuable investment, again, of your time, like if you're not feeling extreme, like, joy and happiness fuck it don't even bother they're saying like there's not much spiritually that you have to do here you know you have that fear that new people with the same old patterns and maybe that you're the problem and you know relationships that didn't work out but they say you know looking out for number one is the only thing you can do it's always going to be challenging to find the right person i mean you can be the most spiritually and like emotionally psychologically evolved human being but it's still hard to find a person that you can connect to on that level that will bring you joy and happiness and so you know this month for you is all about surrounding yourself with ease with comfort with joy with happiness okay um, so they're saying we want you to shift your mindset a little bit on how you're approaching love and think about all the things that you want and all the things that you desire and people might say you know what that doesn't exist but then you just tell them like shut the fuck up yes it does actually I had a well-meaning friend who said that you know because I had said to my sibling, I was telling my friend about this conversation I had with my sister, where I said, you know, like after all of these, so I haven't had a lot of relationships, but the ones that I had were very dramatic. And so, you know, I was like, well, the first one made me feel really icky about myself. The second one made me, um, like taught me how to like love myself and like my value and my worth, but maybe he overinflated it because now I don't think anyone is good enough for me. And she looked me dead in the face and she goes, nobody is good enough for you. <laughs> and I didn't know if that was an insult or if it was validation. I chose to take it as validation. But the point is, in having a conversation later with my bestie, and you know, we're talking about all of her you know, recent um, adventures and trying to find a good match for her life and you know me contemplating like you know what is it that I want and stuff like that I had related that story to her and I said well I want this 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 and she goes that doesn't exist and in that moment my reaction and I was really proud of myself that you know because your instinctive reaction that thing you think about first is a big indicator of where your mindset is and where your heart is and what your core belief system is said shut your dirty mouth it does exist if I believe it does we're only limited by our own imaginations okay so you can have what you want it might take you longer if you're picky to find it but it's out there and so for single Leo's you know that's the challenge is just kind of like remembering okay what is it that I want and saying you know obviously it's gonna be hard if I'm looking for a freaking unicorn but the unicorn is there okay so they're saying like if you are um, kind of like in this mindset of I don't think that love exists or I'll never love you know a new person the way that I love this other person and it didn't work out or you know I'm not lovable any of those mindsets they need to change and because that's how we're going to get a new beginning they're saying these are lies that you're telling yourself and you're believing them and that's the problem and that's why you're not yet meeting your forever person they're saying like the right person is going to show up for you and um, if it shows up for you in June it's going to likely be through a friend or an acquaintance like you bump into somebody who happens to be hanging out with somebody super hot and they're like your dream person or they say you know what um, I bet you would really enjoy my best friend whoever or this new friend or this new colleague I have why don't we all get together for dinner and you can see what you think that kind of an energy they're saying that um, you know once we are able to shift our mindset and look out beyond where we usually look so if you have a place that you're usually looking to find a mate maybe you are always on dating apps this month um, it's more likely that you'd find them a different way. Um, maybe you'd bump into them organically. Maybe you'd find them when um, at a bar. Maybe, um, like I said, it is coming through way of an acquaintance or a friend or you know something like that. So um, first things first, 
make sure that your mindset is right, that you're focused on what you want because you can have it. You really can. It does exist. It might take a while to find, but then um, in speaking about what it is that you desire, what it is that you want in a partner, everybody else is aware then. You know, if you're telling other people, this is what I want in a partner, um, then they know what you're into and can therefore recommend somebody to you because that might be, at least in June, how you make that pairing. For those of you who are coupled, they're saying the big challenge here is kind of um, avoiding arguments and staying focused on what it is that both parties have in common, what it is that you both want from the relationship. They're saying, um, and it's not like you want different things. It's like you might not really know what you want. And so not dissimilar from the Leo singles, you really want to be thinking about what it is that you desire, you know, from your relationship. What kind of relationship do you have? Because it seems like in this relationship, I don't, can you see that? The lighting is kind of shitty. I'm sorry. Um, that maybe you're thinking about how things used to be. You know, this is, we used to have so much fun. Okay, well, you want to have fun? Is that what you're manifesting? Like, is that what you're desiring for the relationship? Let's communicate that then. Because I'm pretty sure that no partner ever is going to say, yeah, you know what? Like, our life is just a little bit too fucking fun. Like, let's make things a little bit more boring. I mean, they could be tired. You could be going out a little too much and they need that downtime to decompress. But they're never going to say, hey, you know what? Like, our life is too fun. It's just way too fucking exciting and fun. <laughs> Nobody says that. Um, so anyway, they're saying that, you know, in your relationship, this is a form of self-care. Figuring out what it is you desire and what you want. Because otherwise what's happening is when you discover in a conversation or a situation with your partner what you don't want, you're going to bring it up to them, right? You're going to be like, hey, I don't like that. And that's going to cause an argument and it's going to damage your relationship. Whereas if you are thinking about those things in advance, you can think about what you want and instead suggest the opposite to them and they should be open to that. And so they're saying, you know, this is the trick to achieving more happiness and joy in your relationship instead of arguments, because those are likely to come up here and there throughout the month of June otherwise. And it's going to make you feel unsafe and unstable in the relationship. Like, you know, is this really, you might have all of a sudden a fear, like, is this relationship going to last if you're not able to do that inward reflection? and think about what it is you desire from the relationship. For those of you in undefined situations, what they say here is, um, you know, maybe don't give so much to these situations, at least in the month of June. And they say that, um, you know, if you feel like you might take actions at all, make sure that they are the types of actions that, you um, create more certainty for you, okay? So they're saying you won't necessarily feel satisfied with the actions that you do take, and you won't necessarily feel satisfied with other parties' reactions to them. But what they're saying is, like, otherwise you're going to find yourself in this pattern where you don't feel... Um, where you feel like things are just kind of going one direction that you don't really like and you don't know how to get out of it. And so this sometimes has to do with setting boundaries, right? So let's say, for example, um, I am talking to a dude, right? And we're texting a lot. And um, then we start sexting, right? And then, But we haven't seen each other in a while. And then he's like, hey, why don't you come over, whatever, whatever. And then I might be like, um... Is that all you want me for? You know? Uh, and, but here's the thing. If I set up that, that scenario, right? I didn't assert a boundary and be like, look, this is the only, I only do those kind of things if I'm in like a serious committed relationship. I only have these kinds of conversations in that way. Because now this person is going to see you. Um, they don't think they need to give more effort or time or love or like take you to dinner or whatever because you didn't lay that precedent in advance okay so that's what they're saying is like really think about what is it that I want and try to achieve more of it try to get more of it if you do anything otherwise like and and if they don't give it to you they don't give it to you and then you know that they're not the kind of person who gives you you know these things that you require but basically that's kind of the lesson here and so in your social relationships for the month of june what can you expect they say that there are some patterns or cycles that are not near um being done but there is this like sort of 
moment in time in which you need to be really honest with yourself about what am I getting from these relationships? Again, kind of like those undefined relationships. And what is it that I need? And how can I assert that to my friends or to my family members? And, um, you know, say that. And so what they're saying is it's going to be very challenging for you to bring these sorts of things up. You know, maybe there's something um, more that you need from a relationship or less that you need from a relationship. And it's hard to say it because you're connected. But what they're saying is like, if you don't, if you don't ask, you don't receive, right? The squeaky wheel gets oiled. Like you can't get mad that you don't get oiled if you don't tell them what you desire and what it is that you need. And so there's like, you know, you might have a lot of anxiety about bringing these things up because it feels like a nag or it feels too needy. But what they're saying is you'll achieve really quick results. So don't hesitate to do that. Now your um, other cards for the month are the following. They're saying there's this big need for balance. Thank you, angels, for bringing my life into better balance. And so this is work-life balance. You know, this is balance in your schedule. Like some things have gotten completely out of hand. And so if you just kind of like slow down for a minute um, and you do a little bit more planning on the front end, on the back end, you're going to feel much more at ease. There's this kind of like go, go, go mentality and this sentiment of overwhelm. And this is how you're going to combat it. Um, the affirmation with that one, there is no affirmation except for the one that I read you. Okay, so you're overexerting yourself in some ways, you know, or you're overindulging sometimes, like, because you completely burn out, and so you're useless for a whole day. And so they say, like, once you can do that, here comes a new beginning. And it says, thank you, angels, for opening up the doors to change. I'm ready. You know that you can't sustain the lifestyle that you have been. You know, wh whatever area of your life is, like, a little bit fucked up and out of balance, you know you can't continue to be that. That way and so for a lot of you like if this is something to do with work it is about that whole concept like asking other people to help you um this new beginning is a positive change where like a lot of light and good things flow to you and isn't that interesting because your card here is ebb and flow okay so they say inhale and exhale breathe in the world breathe yourself out into the world so it's like taking a deep breath in to calm yourself and then releasing negativity but you can also do this with your aura field you know like breathing in a color like through one of the chakras or just like a giant bubble around you and then expanding your energy field bigger and bigger out with each breath that's going to help you I don't know if a lot of you do this but I notice myself and I'm a Leo which is why I'm talking about myself more in this video also I'm a narcissist <laughs> I'm just kidding um no it's because like I notice when I'm really focused on something or I'm anxious about something, I don't breathe as much. My breathing becomes a lot more shallow and not as deep, right? I might hold my breath when I'm like really focused and like typing something up or I'm angry. I'm like, <gasps> after. Okay, so this is why that's important. It'll help you to go with the flow a little bit more. Um, then, oh, I wanted, I forgot to tell you a few things. Your chakra of the month that you want to focus on, it's your heart chakra, okay? So if we're going to be focusing on bringing things in and expanding them out, that's a good place to start, right? I'm allowing love to flow in and then I'm expanding that. I'm like super fucking expansive with my love energy because that's always going to come back to me like a million times fold. And this is what Leos are good at, right? We're good at showing love everywhere, like we're, like they say, the heart of a lion, right? Because that heart is so big and so generous. It's fierce too. <laughs> but you know, so we want to be expanding that, but also accepting that love in. And, you know, going back to the beginning, like we would accept help from others. That's a way to show others that we love them even, is to honor them by allowing them to help us. Because otherwise they might feel guilty in a relationship. Um... Our other chakra that we want to focus on is our sacral chakra. That's the one like below your belly button. And I like to call that one the fear chakra. That's where our fears come from. That's also your sexual chakra. Um, but we want to work on eliminating our fears, um, any fears that we have, you know, and especially our fears and asking for help with things. So um, now that being said, uh, I wanted to talk more about this card. So this one kind of covers the other two chakras, you know, below, on the lower half, below the heart. And the yellow represents our solar plexus. And then this one's um, representing 
the root chakra. Now the root chakra is like our day-to-day -day routines and stuff, something we need help balancing. And so they're saying, you know, um, we're going to get a lot of confidence and we're going to use our confidence and we're going to like really work on that aspect of our life. And the number here, I don't know if you can see it, it's the lighting is so weird. I'm so sorry is a 13, it's a one and a three. So it's a new beginning that is fated to create more stability. And they're saying that this is done by concerted effort. So I don't, I'm sure a ton of you are probably aware of um, Mel Robbins, who wrote a book and it's about like this method where five, four, three, two, one, I haven't read the book, but you know, if you're feeling like down and stuck and depressed and like, I literally can't even like, I'm overwhelmed and so I just do nothing. That's the way to psych yourself out of it. And it's based on like a lot of science and stuff like that. She does TED Talks. I would look her up on YouTube um, if you're, because it, it takes a long ass time to read like an actual book. <laughs> you can listen to these in the car and things like that. So anyway, um, it's pretty motivational. Like it, it helps trick your brain how to get moving because that's the hardest part and that's what you need to do is you need to put in that effort. So the affirmation with that is with optimism, faith, and effort, I can overcome like any of my challenges because a lot of us are feeling like overwhelmed and we're on that brink of shutting down. So we need to just jump up and ask for help and, um, you know, kind of move down this path. It's a part of our lessons. It's a part of our destiny. It's a new beginning, like old things. We are wrapping those up. Let's just like you know, it might be hard for us to put those final touches, like put the bow on the little package and like send it on its way. But we are done with those lessons. We're walking into new ones, new, better beginnings. Okay. So, um, next I think I'm going to talk about your crystal of the month, which is the brown calcite. Calcites are very shiny like this. Okay. Now, um, brown calcite isn't mentioned very often. And this one correlates to the, um, root chakra, but it's awesome for, you know, creating new systems and routines, finding that balance, feeling safe and asking other people for help, you know, so that'll help us to eliminate some of our fears, break old patterns, get rid of anxiety. It'll help to ground us. Um, it'll increase our energy and our confidence and our motivation. All of these things I was just talking about um, creates balance, consistency, stability at home and in work. It um, is really awesome for clearing away confusion. It's a really good study stone. It helps students out a lot. It helps you to have good judgment. It gets rid of like your spastic, like too hyper energy, which I should probably be using that. I'm just gonna set that right there in my root chakra. So if you have one already at home, awesome. You can get one from your local crystal store. If you don't, you can get one from me. I'll mail it to you. And then you'll also get like a complete playlist on how to use crystals with that, as well as like a... Uh, sheet with like crystal care and all the things that it does because it does many other things like it helps balance your metabolism um, it's the stone of business people and parents so it's totally about organization and getting your shit together it's an awesome get your shit together stone um, and then our other energy here is the coral light ray energy. This is our power color for the month. Okay. So allowing flow and synchronicity into your life. So first we achieve that balance. We ask other people for help and then we kind of just like allow things to go the way that they're going to go. Cause this is a new beginning that will be very abundant for us. Cause it's a number 18. Um, and you know, the one plus the eight is a nine. So they're like that old shit. It's done. We're walking into a new reality where things are new and they're exciting and they're fun and they're really lucky for us and abundance and all of these things that we want come quickly. Whether that is like a new, because there's all of this energy lately for Leos about new beginnings and, you know, prosperity. And so whether that's a new relationship, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new income stream, whether that's um, a new home or a new baby or whatever, a new best friend. They're saying like, this is really gonna help us to embrace that using the color coral. So you can wear co coral. Um, you can imagine that coming in through your sacral chakra or um, anywhere, really, any of the chakras. It's going to really give you a boost. So um, that one gets rid of stress, fear, anxiety, worry, and um, it says it heals broken hearts and unrequited love. Um, so this, the affirmation is my life is easy and full of synchronicity. I follow the most divine path for me. Isn't that cute? Love it. And then, um, your kind of mantra for the month, 
When I make a mistake, I realize it's only part of the learning process. Okay, so that's a big part of what I was talking about. You know, like sometimes we start something and we go down the wrong path and then we just go, you know what, fuck it all. <laughs> and then we just like mope and we throw ourselves a pity party and you're like, why am I even going to like start this? Why am I even going to like get into this project? Like it's not even worth it. Blah, blah, blah. Ask for help. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We are going to learn from our mistakes and we're going to ask for more support. I love you so much and I'll see you in July. And um, if you made it to the end of the video, let me know how um, you might challenge yourself to ask for support this month. Because maybe you have a really unique way of doing it that other people haven't thought of. You know? Love you. I forgot to mention that the lucky day of the month for Leos is the 19th. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!